What up? It's your girl, Cherie, and I have the pleasure of introducing a woman who has more talents than I can name. She's a producer, a writer, and known as Black Hollywood type woman, Miss Erica Bain. Hey, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. So we're going to jump right into the interview. So tell our listeners where you're from. I am from Baltimore, Maryland. Hey. <laughs> um, I grew up on the <laughs> northeast side of Baltimore. Okay, okay, nice. And uh, where are you currently residing at now? I currently live in LA. Um, I moved to LA about a year and a half ago. Uh, okay. It's crazy that the time is moving so fast and that I'm here because I remember. Um, wanting to move here for like seven years like after graduate school wow. i wanted to move here i did a couple other moves in the meantime and i still didn't make it out here because like la is a big thing it's a big move but to finally mm-hmm. be here i'm so excited that's awesome and it sounds like you're enjoying every moment <laughs> i am it's crazy because i'm enjoying <laughs> like every moment like when you guys hear that, hear what we're saying, like, every moment. It's been hard. Like, L.A. is hard. But I've also learned in my move here to be able to enjoy the struggle. Because right. at the end of the day, it's still a blessing, you know? Absolutely. You know, it's a lot of people who always dream about going over there and never make it. So, that's yeah. what's up. And it's people who, like, I've been here a year and a half, and I've already seen dozens of people come and go. Like, they've come here, wow. and then they've gone. They've gone back wherever they came from. And it's just, like, for me, it's humbling because I'm still here, and I'm still able to do what I love. So I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the traffic. <laughs> I'm going I'm to get my podcast <laughs> up in the traffic, you know. <laughs> I'm going to find a way to enjoy every moment. Absolutely. Now, how did you become Black Hollywood type woman? <laughs> <laughs> I just so many people speaking on that. Like, honestly, that title came from me struggling with my IG bio. Like, I'm on IG a lot more than mm-hmm. I would like to be. And I'm seeing other people, and I'm like, yo, they summarize what they do really well. It's so succinct. It's just clear. And I'm just like, girl, what you what you going to tell these people about you? And I struggled with it for a while. And it was like one time that I was on there, and I feel like I was on there for like an hour straight. And then when mm-hmm. I stopped to think, like, yo, you've been on IG for an hour. And I was thinking about what I did. I had went through and I had, like, liked 200 pictures and videos. And I was, like, I might have put up, like, 50 comments of, like, yes. Like, if you see, if you, like, watch what I do and, and mm-hmm. if you, like, go to that tab that tell you what your friends are doing and you're my friend or you follow me, you'll see that mm-hmm. I'm always commenting on liking something inspirational or something where I feel like someone is shining and I want to celebrate that. So I had, like, like 200 <laughs> pictures and posted yes and go off or whatever like 50 times and shared a bunch of posts with my friends that I thought was inspirational and when I stopped I was like mm-hmm. no this at the core is, is who you are like in everything that I do it is mm-hmm. me hyping people up and I really enjoy that like I enjoy seeing others shine I enjoy celebrating what people are doing and that's kind of where that title <laughs> came up with like that's where I came up with that title and it kind of okay stuck. okay I, I see why they gave it to you. Yes, yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. You know, that's a and it kinda, wonderful trait to have. <laughs> and when I thought about it, it's like, yo, this is literally, it ties into everything that you already do. Like, yeah, I produce, you know, these amazing photo shoots and I, you know, work with some of these celebrity talents. But at the end of the day, I'm doing all of that because I want people to know about them and I want people to see them in a different light and I want people to love them. So right. it just fits. Okay. Now, how has it, well, has it always been a dream since your childhood to produce and film? Absolutely not. Wow. <laughs> that is like I the number one. Opposite. <laughs> that is the number one, I think, misconception about me. And it's crazy because I don't really, um, I don't really talk about myself. So people really don't know, but... My dream when I was younger, like, back before I could even remember up until probably, like, I was 23, was to be a doctor. Like, that was the goal. I was obsessed with the idea of, like, helping people. And as a child, I was very creative. I danced, I drew, I painted, I wrote poems. I had tons of Barbies, and I, like, created worlds with them. I played sports. Like, I started playing sports when I was uh, in first grade. 
Um, but when I got to like middle school and then ultimately high school, I really dove into the sciences and I always had the idea of like, okay, you become a doctor because you want to help people. So then I was on the science track and when I, I think about this a lot now because I, w- I don't think I would have ever imagined myself being here, but I have one um, childhood journal where I actually mentioned that I would want to be a Renaissance woman as one of my dreams, but everywhere else that you would ever see in any of my um, like writings or drawings or like, you know, when people ask you what you want to be when you grow up and you have like drawings or whatever, like all of those said doctor, like <laughs> all of them. So um, I went to high school at Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. Everyone knows that that's like Maryland's Magnet High School for math, science, and engineering. I did really well there. Now that I think about it, it's like I thought that I was always really good at science, but I don't know if mm-hmm. I'm really good at it or if I was just well trained. <laughs> but it really wasn't until college and then um, subsequently internships and volunteering and shadowing that I even stopped to think that medicine might not be for me. So I went through all of my younger years, all of my like early adulthood thinking that I was going to be a doctor and specifically going to be an obstetrician. Even when I started my blog, honestly, I was like, yo, I'm going to do this to like scratch an itch, like to scratch this like entertainment, fashion, creative itch that I have. But ultimately mm-hmm. your career is going to be this. Um, so yeah, no, this wasn't always the dream but Mm -hmm. I um when I started to intern and volunteer and stuff I really learned that our medical system isn't set up correctly like it's not (laughs) the place that's supposed to like it's all fine and good of like doctors help people but in our medical system I don't really believe that to be the case I believe that our medical system is really in bed with big pharma and Mm -hmm. a lot of doctors are trained to push medicine they're not they're not pushed to heal people they're pushed to like like kind of like help a situation so like give you this pill to treat this thing that's going to start something else and when right. I started to and see that give you medication. medication right right and when I started to see that like when I was volunteering and shadowing and um, doing my internships I started to see more I'm like yo I ain't signing up for this the rest of my life all this <laughs> I don't know if this is for me like this isn't what well, you said, basically, y'all want me to be uh, a legal drug dealer. So that kind of, like, sparked for me, like, okay, maybe there's something else. And luckily, when I was in grad school, because I graduated college, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go straight to medical school. I'm trying to figure it out. I want to see if I really do want to be a doctor, if I want to do something else in the sciences. So I went to grad school, and it was in grad school that I started my com, that first entertainment blog. And luckily, I did, because when I decided to make the transition and pivot out of medicine, I had somewhere to land, you know, once I jumped. Okay. Awesome. So you kind of pretty much like set the platform for yourself. Mm -hmm. But even that wasn't even a plan. (laughs) It's like, I started the blog because I really wanted to start my own magazine, but I was in grad school at the time working on the thesis. It's like, girl, are you crazy? You have to write a thesis. (laughs) You can't write a magazine. And the blog right. is like me, like, okay, well, here, do this, and that will kind of give you what you want. Okay. Now, uh, where did you learn the ins and out with digital media and being behind the camera? Hmm. I learned the ins and outs of digital media. Well, everything, honestly, um, that I know in reference to entertainment and media by doing it. Um, when I started my blog, at the time, mm-hmm. black blogs were growing very rapidly. So I had um, Nicole Bitchy, I had the Concrete Loop, I had the YDF to look to as kind of like frameworks. And then mm-hmm. I knew that I didn't have any school. Like I didn't go to journalism school. I, I'm a nerd, literally. Like I'm the science trained <laughs> girl to the nines, like <laughs> trying to be out here putting together a website and writing um, articles and, you know, covering events. So mm-hmm. I knew that I had to get experience. And from there, I kind of like put myself out there. I, um, after graduate school, I became an allograft skin processor. So I was working in the lab for Oregon procurement company and my schedule luckily wow. was like four days on, three days off. So I would do four days there. And then I would spend the other three days in New York. And when I would go to New York, I got an internship with Vibe, working with the Vibe Vixen imprint. Um, That's awesome. 
yeah, but it, even that, it's like, that was now, I guess, 10 years ago. But that mm -hmm. came from me just saying I wanted to work. Like, I knew I needed to get experience, so I wasn't like, oh, let me try to find a job. Like, you show up someplace that you feel is doing what you want to do, and you say, let mm -hmm. me work, then people are more likely to, like, to bring you on and give you an opportunity. So I see the conversation a lot now with people like, oh, don't work for free, don't work for free. All of my experience, everything that I learned came from me putting myself in a position to do it for free first. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that uh, wisdom right there. I hope yeah. a lot of young people are listening to that because a lot of people want to sure. get paid but don't want to put in the work behind that. So For sure. Like, I started that vibe. And then um, I went up to New York one time for a Concrete Loop was having there. Um, and I don't even know if people don't remember Concrete Loop. It's crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> Concrete Loop was having a fifth anniversary party. And mm -hmm. at that party, it was, like, every black blogger that mattered, that, like, had tons of following. And um, there was a bunch of magazines in the building, too. And that's where I uh, was able to meet the editor at Blue Magazine, which is a men's magazine based out of New York. And um, mm -hmm. he kind of brought me into Blue Life Media and Entertainment Group, and they produced quite a few publications. And with them, I was able to work with Blue Magazine. I was able to work with Pink Magazine. I was able to work with Bombshell, by Blue, which is also another thing that magazine. And I literally just kind of, like, worked my way up in the ranks there. A lot of, when I left, I left as, like, digital director for the full mm -hmm. um, the media portfolio. But I literally was doing everything from writing blog posts to, you know, doing interviews to helping with shoots and stuff like that. But it's because I put myself in a position to, like, hey, you need help? And they gone, um, Devon Johnson is the owner and publisher of Blue, and he's an incredible young black male entrepreneur. And I think it's just dope. When I think back about all that I've done, I feel very good about being in a position to give my time and talent to help his dream. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like that's another thing that people need to take away of like, put yourself in a position to help others, and they will help you. Okay. Now, speaking of college and grad school, uh, what school did you get your undergrad degree from? And then where did you go to grad school at as well? Um, undergrad, I went to Xavier University in Louisiana. Okay. New Orleans. <laughs> I know you had a good time down there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I, what I did, once I got to like junior year I did because I was also a collegiate athlete so I was on scholarship and wow. it's a little it's, it's set up a little differently <laughs> when you were a collegiate athlete. what sport did you play so I was recruited to go there to play basketball and then I mean play volleyball but I also uh -huh. played basketball pretty much all my life so once I got there mm -hmm. I uh talked to the coach <laughs> And I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I knew what I was thinking, but I was just doing the most. So basically, I talked to the coach, got a tryout, and basically, they picked me up, too. So I wound up being a two-sport athlete at that school. And they split That's my scholarship amazing. down the middle. It was, that was really awesome. Like, it was a lot, but um, that was a really, really awesome experience. Like, I was able to play all over the world. We played tournaments in, Ohio, I mean, in Hawaii and the Bahamas, all over the country. Um, that exposed me to a lot. Like, making the decision to go to Xavier was one of the best decisions of my life. Even with Katrina happening my sophomore year and me deciding to go back, it was like the best decision for me. It grew me a lot as a person. Um, and then grad school, I went to Morgan, which is my, both my parents, alma mater, they met at Morgan State University. So I went back to Morgan, got my mm. uh, master's degree. Okay. Now, you do a lot more than just film and produce. I saw your show, Vampa, and I also mm -hmm. watched a few people that you interviewed. Uh, are you currently still doing that? Dane Buzz. I literally just took a meeting <laughs> yesterday <laughs> about oh. Dane as a brand. And it's people okay. like asking me on social, like, why are you doing meetings on Mother's Day? It's like, I'm not a mother yet, so every day is a work day for me. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> I literally did a meeting yesterday, and I'm re revamping and rebranding the Erica Bain brand, and specifically our video 
formatted shows. So yes, Dame Buzz is coming back. I have not done it in quite a few years, um, but that will be back. Um, the blog is getting a little bit of an overhaul. I'm really excited about it. Um, mainly because I've been looking at the landscape right now mm-hmm. and it's just, it looks bleak. Like, <laughs> I've been on some pages. I don't follow, like, the no shade to the shade room or anything like that. But I mm-hmm. get on some of these pages to shade room and all these other, you know, blogs that kind of took the place of, you know, the Nicole Bitchies and the the YBS and all the kind of stuff of, that were popular a few years ago. And it's just like, so much negativity. It's like, is mm-hmm. anybody it okay? Is. is anybody, like, doing well? And I'm just like, if for nothing else, I'm going to revamp and bring air to the so, like, entertainment website back because I just want to talk about all the amazing stuff that we're doing. And like, that's what I talk about on my show. If you want to collaborate any day, let's do it. <laughs> yes, like let's 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 chat after this because going through my feed and I'm super particular about who I follow because I'm all in. Like I live in LA now, so I got right. an excuse to be like I'll protect my energy and this and that. But it's true. <laughs> like I'm very particular about who I follow. I'm very particular about the groups of people that I'm in or with or whatever, the events that I go to. And so part of that is like, I didn't really notice it because the stuff that I don't really care for isn't a part of my day-to-day life. But then when I stepped out to see what's happening, it's just like all of this negativity, all of this just bad shit. Sorry. <laughs> but bad, no, no, you're good. you're good. And it's like enough. Like how do we, we wonder why they're, everyone now is struggling with anxiety and so many people are struggling with mental health and all this other kind of stuff but it's like look at what we are eating like look at what we're ingesting on a day-to-day basis and enough is enough absolutely yep i totally agree like i was looking as well on my timeline and i had to like i guess do a mass unfollowing because i was like i don't participate in any of this like you know just seeing the unfortunate things happen because you know they're celebrities so their life is already out in the open anyway so i completely understand where you're coming from which is true that is 100 percent true and i'll be a lie to sit up here and say that you know erica vein now publishing articles that will never say anything bad but it's also about how we have those conversations like in my meeting yesterday we were talking about stories and we talked about um like my intern brought up cardi b talking about getting liposuction and how mm-hmm. that would be a great thing buzz story or whatever to drop and i'm like okay but why is it because cardi said it because i'm more interested in having a conversation with all of these girls who are trying to keep up with cardi and going to the dominican republic and going to the, to columbia and dying on the table like i just watched a bunch of content created by the glam university and she just went to you know this very popular doctor you get on you get on youtube and you type in bbl and you'll see all these girls are going to the same people she just went to the mm-hmm. same person a month ago and almost died when she needed to get a transfusion because oh, they wanted gosh. to have her surgery in a, in a clinic versus actually she had to push to have her surgery happen in the hospital. And then this past weekend, another influencer gave her mom a gift of getting a BBL and her mom died on Friday. So for me, it's like, let's have a conversation about, yes, Cardi got life reduction. Yes, Cardi looks great. And that's, I'm not going to try to shame you about, you know, plastic surgery or anything, but you got a different type of money, sis. The girls that's trying right. to keep you don't have that. So they're trying to do things to circumvent what's actually happening. And we need to have a conversation of one, why you even want to do this, why you feel like you need to do right. this, and is your life worth it? Like, let's talk about right. it. That Ultimately, way. like, you're going there knowing that, hey, you know, I could possibly die or have, you know, some bad circumstances happen after this. Like, I really want to go out here and do that. Risk all of it for an implant. So I completely agree. Yeah. Now, you so have a business called Create Her Collective. Um, for our listeners who don't know about that, can you explain what it is? Create Her Collective is um, a women's empowerment and education brand I created. Mm-hmm. Um, I did so in the hopes of supporting women who look like me uh, in creating themselves. Um, I think that a lot of the times we fall prey to the idea that life just happens or it is what it is and I really believe that that's a lie. 
um, in my life is a huge, huge proof of that. Um, any woman or man, for that matter, um, that any of us look up to. So anybody that we look to and like, yo, that goals or whatever, their life, their person is the way that it is because they, they made it that way because they created themselves or their life to be that way. And I really just built this brand or I'm building this brand so that other people can really know that. And the way they will know that is by, you know, us showing examples and then providing resources and tools to be able to help get you there and help you learn the things that you need to know because a lot of people don't know what they don't know. Um, right. So, yeah, ultimately that's what it is. My mission is, is to really just show and give women the tools and the resources they need to create themselves. Um, yeah. People now okay. have seen, um, they know the brand because we, we've been featuring celebrities. So we do a big shoot right. and we create video content and, and really dope photos. Um, but the next couple of months, we're rolling out the different phases that are going to include trainings and classes and events and other stuff so that people can really interact with the brand, but then more so know where they fit and know how they can use us to become what they want to become. Um, I'm trying to, you know, empower the next group of celebrity stylists. I'm trying to empower the next group of screenwriters. I'm trying to educate the next female directors. Um, so I have content and things planned through this brand to be able to do that and to show black and brown women like yo you can do a lot of things um when i talk about create her it's a, it's a real passion project for me because i feel like i wanted to be a doctor because that's what i was told i needed to do to make it out the hood like when i was growing up it's like your your parents want better for you they want you to go to college and they want you to either be a doctor a lawyer or architect like something that's gonna make you some money it's gonna help you get out the hood and there's so many other things that you can do with your life um, that are just as successful, that are just as like, amazing. And I just fear that we don't know. We Very see other true. people you know, it don't. goes with the saying, ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. We see other people and it's like, oh, that's great for them, but that can never be me. And it's like, no, it can be. And um, that awakening happened, happened for me, honestly, when I saw Ava. Like, I have been a fan of film and television. I've been creative pretty much my whole life, but I never really thought, even like, and I, you know, was introduced to Ava maybe three years after I started my blog. So I like started that because I was speaking about things I was interested in. But when I saw Ava and listened to her stories, like, oh, wait, I could take this and actually do some other stuff with it. And I just think that we need a vehicle to kind of like provide more of those aha moments and more places for us to see ourselves and others so that we can get up and do things that actually make us happy. I'm one of those people mm -hmm. who actually believe that if everybody was a little bit more happy, we would have a better world. I totally agree with you. <laughs> you know? Now, how did you decide on which clients to showcase, like, or reach out to? Um, okay, so... Our features, they're not technically clients. Um, they're literally just people who we know the story, me and my team, we know the story of and we think are dope and we want to shine a light on. Um, that's really where it came from. Brisha was our very first and it was she was perfect because she literally is from where I'm from. And mm -hmm. when I tell you that this girl, Brisha Webb is so damn talented. It's like it oozes from her. And people know, some people know of her or, ha or like have heard of her, they hear her name, like, oh, I think I know her. But it's like, I don't think that she has the, um, the fame that her talent wanted. So for me, that was a no, for her being our first was a no brainer. And then Gabrielle Dennis, I followed her for years. Um, <laughs> she Likewise. looked at her catalog of work. She has such, a huge wide range of work that she's done and she's been putting in work for years so um she came she came about as a reference to a thought because we also she has she's also repped by um another feature that we have yet to release yet so i can't really speak on it but they okay. brought the idea of her and mm -hmm. i was like of course like yes 
let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that, she's already on my list. I do have like right. a, um, a features like hopeful list, I guess, that I kind of go down and you know I pitch out to. But for me, it was it's just about featuring women with really great stories who are super talented because again, I want to feed into the mission of like showing people themselves in others so that they can see that they can do it too. Um, mm-hmm. So, like going back to Brisha real quick, because I can't ring her bell enough. Like, she comes from where I come from, and it's like her, like Scott Davis, Shatira Morganell, Tiffany Bloom, Malika Frazier, Tracy Toms, all these Baltimore women who are out here making it happen for themselves. But when you go back to Baltimore, you don't see that. You don't really think about it. And I'm like, yo, y'all need to know. Like, you need to know that these opportunities are out here. You need to know these women are out here. And this is your right. framework. This is what you can look to. Of like, what do I do next? Or how do I get out? This is how. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of how this features come about. We uh, we just released Navia Robinson uh, two weeks ago. She was important for me because she's a young talent. She's on Disney. And she really... She's so socially aware and, and very mature. And I thought that mm-hmm. that was important to, to speak to in reference to inspiring younger folks. Um, mm-hmm. We already have two other features that are shot and not haven't been released yet. But as of right now, I have another, like I just have a full list of people who I want to speak to a lot. And then we just kind of go down the list from there. That's awesome. Man, I'm speechless right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love what oh, you're I doing. Do know, like, I do want to note with our really features. Great. With our features, I do want to note that I do take into consideration fully, like, people who I just think don't have enough shine. So mm-hmm. the problem with us is, like, specifically in Hollywood, it's like they've decided who of us is the, like, black Hollywood elite. And those are the people who get the covers every time. And those are the people who get the features and the this and the that. And I'm like... I'm going to have a platform that's going to do this, and I'm going to talk about everybody that's talented. I'm going to let you know who you need to know about. So that's also a really big driving force for me. Okay. Now, as busy as you are, I know that you have a team of people who help you. So are you currently looking for any interns? If so, what's the requirement? I'm pretty sure we got some young people ready to work who's listening. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, I'm actually in the process right now of hiring for summer interns. We've been looking or we've been accepting applications since March. My team has been interviewing. Um, So, yes, we are hiring for interns and we're hiring in pretty much every department. For me, internship opportunities are great because that's kind of like where I started. And I look forward to really giving people experience to do the things that they want to do. I feel like our education system is dropping the ball a little bit. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. a big proponent of go to college. Go to college. Everyone today is telling you, oh, you don't need to go to college because you can learn whatever on YouTube. Okay, so that's fine. But you go to college to learn how to learn. And I feel like the only right. thing that college is missing is the actual experience. So I have an intern right now who does video production with me, but she has only produced academic style video. And she's now in LA and she's on set with me for Gabrielle's shoot or for Bruce's shoot. And she doesn't Mm -hmm. know talent management. She doesn't know set etiquette. She doesn't know, you know, different things because she hasn't been exposed to it. And I feel like internships are a great way if you pick the right places, and that's a whole other deal, but if you pick the right places, they're a great way to give you the experience to kind of like bridge the gap of what you're going to be missing coming out of academia. And I also want to like say when it comes to internships, pick those things wisely. You don't always have to go to NBC or E if you want to be an on-air host. You could go to, you know, an up-and-coming blogger or an up-and-coming entertainment platform, and you pro- will probably get more experience You'll probably get on camera time. You'll get some things for actual real versus just getting coffee or just, you know, logging tape or things like that. So when you're thinking right. about your internship opportunities, be smart about it and don't don't be pretentious. Don't worry about just the name. Worry about the experience that you can get. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's about that. It's about you really getting experience. Very true. Now, what projects do you have coming up? You gotta give us a scoop. I have a lot. Um, I'm doing so much, and I'm always in the process of, like, trying to figure out how to simplify it, but I need to to realize that that's not my life. Like, I don't 
operate well that way. Um, coming up this summer, I'm going to be producing my first short. So I wrote a short film. I'm really okay. diving a lot more into actual like film and television. Uh, I went to Sundance this past year, covered it for Create Her, and that changed my life. <laughs> I had oh, wow. ideas and started writing some things before, but now I've joined a, this year, um, in January, I joined a writer's group. And I'm doing a mm-hmm. couple of other things I'm not going to necessarily speak about. But uh, mm-hmm. it's really pushed me into um, film and television from the creative standpoint. So if I don't um, if I don't necessarily direct a short film, I'm definitely going to produce it. I also mm-hmm. have a couple of other scripts that I've written. So I'm working on getting those things produced. Um, this month is like fellowship month and I am submitting for writing fellowships as well. Um, I have, of course, my brand. So, Create Her is rolling out some amazing things. Like, we're doing an event series this summer to really help us, like, help creators of color network better. Um, so, I'm really trying to create experiences where I get people together that need to talk but don't know how to talk to each other. So, I'm going to introduce you myself, like, face to face. That's the first thing I'm no. doing. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, Erica Vane, we're getting a revamp. We're rolling out entertainment content there. Um, yeah, I'm just really trying to stay busy. I'm trying to utilize all that my That is busy. The first thing you said was busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got my business. I have my extensions business that, you know, we're working on some fun things for summer with that and a couple of other business ventures that are in the pipeline. So I got a okay. ton of things coming up. Oh, well, we look, you're more than welcome to come back and share all those things that's going on. <laughs> I'd love to have you back on my show as many times as you want. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. Man, my pleasure. My pleasure. And before you go, can you share your social media with our listeners? Yes. So if you want to know the day to day and the what's happening with me, um, I'm at Erica Vain, E R I C A V A I N on all the platforms, every single one of them. Um, I'm most active on Instagram, specifically Instagram stories. Um, and now Twitter a little bit more. But that's where you can follow me and then you can follow Create Her at Create Her Collective on all the platforms. All right. Again, thank you for coming on my show today. I truly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. It's your girl Sharice, and I'm out. Digital Dope Radio.